how do we get all of those little current loops lined up in the first place? I mean, if I had you all stand up with a tennis ball going around the same direction, that's not the most obvious way you'd be rotating. Some of you have been lying on the table going around, some of you have been standing on your head going around, would be in all different orientations. The way you line these up is you use the fact that a loop produces a B field like a bar magnet. And a bar magnet will line up in an external magnetic field. It's a compass needle. And, and so if I have a magnetic field and I have a little loop in it, well, this is a hard problem unless I replace this with a little bar magnet. It goes in there and out there. By right hand rule three, that gives me a north pole that way. Okay? That little bar magnet would rotate to line up with the field. Okay? Now, let's magnetize a steel rod. Uh, I take this rod and I put it in the presence of a very strong magnetic field. By very strong, I mean every single time that I use this magnet, my credit cards don't work afterwards. I meant to leave my wallet in my office. I just forgot. So I'll just call the companies again. <laughs> uh, I've got a, a brilliant uh, hammer, a special hammer that doesn't stick. And, and I just tap this. I just want to jiggle the atoms so that they're free to rotate and the field is going to line them up. Now I have a bunch of paper clips here. Let's see if this is magnetized. Whoa, yeah, that's a magnet. Now, how do I get those dipoles that are all lined up to go random again. How do I demagnetize this iron rod? Well, some of you did it in lab. Just by dropping your magnets. You just, oops, oops. And then we had to go behind you and magnetize them again. Okay. If I just keep on dropping that, I get them all jiggled up. And now, it's not a magnet. Not a magnet. Now, here's another way that I can magnetize this. I have here a solenoid. This solenoid is just a coil. And I'm going to hook it to a DC source, like a battery, that's going to send current always the same direction around the coil. That means this coil is always going to have a north side, always going to have a south side. If I pass this through that solenoid, the magnetic field in the center of the solenoid is going to line up all the atoms of the iron. And sure enough, I've got a magnet again. Now, another way I could demagnetize this is I could disconnect this coil from the DC battery and hook it instead to AC. Now, I want to talk to those of you that are going to be teachers, high school teachers. You don't want one of these in your classroom. Okay? You see why, right? If you have one of these, lock it up. And when you use it, always be sure to plug this end in first. Okay? I'm just trying to keep you alive. Okay, now it's safe to plug this end in. Now, when I plug this in, I'm going to change the direction of the magnetic field in that solenoid back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, 120 times a second. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay? Say it with me. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. So now when I put this magnetized rod through, the direction of the field is switching back and forth so quickly, it just confuses it. It's just randomizing all those atoms of iron. And it's going to be demagnetized. Sure enough, nothing. Now there's one more way to magnetize that I wouldn't encourage you to use this way, but it works a little. 
If you line this up with the Earth's magnetic field, which is towards Canada, down 70 degrees, and you tap that, you can magnetize it a little. Another way to demagnetize a rod is to heat it. And as you heat that rod, you're increasing the thermal energy, the random energy of all those atoms. When you get to what's called the Curie temperature, you decouple the neighbors and it no longer becomes a magnet. See if your neighbor knows three ways to magnetize a rod, three ways to demagnetize it,